In this video, I want to talk about importing different files inside Unreal Engine 5. We already saw how we can import GLTF and FBX. We're going to continue and I will show you other tips and tricks. Uh, we're going to import or actually open up UE assets files. We can also get these files from Twinmotion plugin, so we can get in motion assets inside Unreal Engine. And we're also gonna see Alembic files and FBX files. So right now I'm using the ArcViz, um, the arch architectural visualization project that you find when you launch the engine. So just to show you here, this is the launcher. And if you go in the architecture section, you will find blank and ArcViz. So I'm using this one here just to show you real quick another scene and uh, another option that you have here in the main launcher the the splash screen and we, i'm just going to talk about briefly this uh, about uh, the management uh, of the assets in the project and then we're going to move on into a blank scene and as you can see here i've already created two files that you can do so you can start from arcviz and you can start from blank now before you actually do that to use the twin motion files, let me just close this. You can go here in the marketplace, and we already saw this uh, in another video, but I'm gonna show you again. So I can go here and type twin motion, and what you will need in order for this um, video lesson uh, is the DataSmith twin motion importer. So click there, download it, install it, and then you will need the Twinmotion content for Unreal. Here you will find the, the whole content that you can get and you can bring in uh, Unreal Engine 5. You can also take uh, your scene that you created in Twinmotion, an entire scene, and dynamically work it in Unreal Engine. So you can export it and import it in Unreal Engine. But you will find other video guys in the channel talking about this. So we're going to talk about something slightly different here. We're going to see simply how we can add twin motion content, not an entire twin motion scene. So inside the editor, once you open up the editor, you can go to plugins and here you can search for data smith. And you can see you have many importers for Cinema 4D or, well, in this case, you will need to activate the DataSmith FBX and the, the DataSmith FBX importer for the FBX. And there you go, you can see there the DataSmith Twinmotion importer. This is going to help you to create and uh, open up assets. Okay, so um, I'm not going to do it in this scene right here. Then you, you will need also to restart the the editor. Now, why I want to show you this one here, just to have a quick look on how you can organize, manage the assets that you're going to bring in your scene. So this is, again, kind of a basic part of the video course. We're going to see really simple things for those of you who probably never use Unreal Engine. So first of all, um, let's see here about some graphic quality. So what I tend to do when I have big scenes like this is to decrease the quality, first of all, so I can move easily and fluidly. And also something that really helps is to change here to show is to change the anti-aliasing option. So I, I turn this off so that I can see everything really nice and without slowing the process. This, these are just quick tips that we already saw also in other videos, but I just want to repeat these because they're really important. And then you can use the far view plane. So when you have really big scenes like this and you want to keep it not too heavy, you can decrease the far view plane cut. So everything that's gonna be too far is gonna be cut it out, but you can work better then. So you can see here, things are disappearing. So I will only see the things that are really close. And this is an architectural scene. So you can use this as a sample. Now, if I play, if I press play, I can see the full simulation. So without 
the cat plane that I've just used and I can see the best quality here. I can move around. You can see a nice water there, animated water. So you can move around. Try to understand how these scenes are done. So use the sample scenes. These are really important to study and to become more expert. And this is what I do actually. So right here, let's see a little bit about the outliner first. So you can see how everything is organized into folders. So you can create folders and subfolders. Here you see the folders for cameras, folders for environment, for interaction, notes that you find inside the, the, this simulation here. You find some notes that are gonna explain to you uh, about this particular scene, but you will find it also in others. And then you have this part. Now, this is the part that is gonna be interesting for us in this first part of the course, because these are all static meshes. Now we're gonna import static meshes in the, in the first part, because these are really simple and these are like the building blocks of your scene, of your levels, of your maps. And then we have sequences. This is for animation. And we're gonna talk about those, the animation later and then still cameras again. So cameras that are gonna help you to create uh, visualizations in this case for architecture, but you can use it for many, many reasons. So the first management tool, I would say is the outliner. This is where you need to organize to make things better and easier to work with. And then you have the content drawer. Now in the content drawer, also you have folders and uh, subfolders and everything is well structured. So if you double click there, you have subfolders and levels. So in this one here, we actually have more than one level. We have exterior, we have interior, we have interior light mass. So these are like different uh, lighting settings. So if I open up this, I will not save the one that I'm working with just to show you how we can change uh, levels. And just let's wait just a few seconds. And here we go again. Now, again, this is simplified for uh, performance reason. I'm sacrificing a little bit of quality. Now you can see that now it's again, a composition of static meshes and materials and lights and everything is going to be organized into this content drawer. So right here, you can find levels, you can find materials, you can find meshes, but you need to be organized. Otherwise it's going to be really difficult for you to find stuff. And I'm going to show you again, how that, that is done. And, um, also, if you want, you can access the actual folder where all this content is stored. So what you see in the content drawer or content browser, it's also visible if you reach the folder where you install the project. So these are the two projects that I created, blank arc visualization and arc visualization project. So right now we are right here. So you can see I have a folder which is called content. Now everything I do here is going to also reflect the things that are going to be found in the content drawer. Another important folder is where you have installed the engine itself. So these are the projects. Inside the projects, you will find content, you will find levels, so different uh, levels on, in the same project, and different maps. And here you will find the actual um, software. So if I go into Epic Games, UE5, this is the actual engine. And this is also where you install plugins. For example, if you install the plugins for uh, Twinmotion, we'll find here into Plugins Marketplace, Twinmotion to Unreal and Twinmotion Unreal content. Now this is the actual content. And you, you can see here, I've also installed other plugins. So this is usually where you find everything concerning the overall engine. And this is useful because you can if, if you cannot see directly the Twinmotion stuff or well, actually any other UE assets, you can just go there, navigate into this content, into the libraries, and you will find your characters, furniture, landscape, lights, materials. So if, if I go into characters and ready pose, these are the humans, the post humans. So if I go into meshes, these are all the meshes of these humans and then I also have materials and textures, but these are not actually meshes 